Welcome to Science with Soul. I'm Dr. Lottie Valentine and the host of this podcast. I'm a physician, evidential psychic medium, international keynote speaker, and author of Med School After Menopause, The Journey of My Soul, an inspirational story about transformation, healing, and spirituality, available online at Amazon, as well as other online platforms worldwide. The inspiration for this podcast came from my own life experiences. As I have journeyed through life, it has taught me that we're part of a greater divine web of interconnectedness. I have walked the path of illness, healing, and transformation. After two near-death experiences, I became clairvoyant, clairaudient, and clairsentient, and was guided to attend medical school at the age of 54. We will be meeting with many different types of doctors, healers, as well as spiritual leaders, educators, and other inspiring souls in this podcast. It is my hope that you will gain information and create a path to healing your own life physically, emotionally, and spiritually, and bridge the gap between science and soul. To learn more about me or to work with me spiritually for ancestral healing, medical intuitive, evidential psychic medium, or to take my eight week long course, Soul's Journey, Heart's Way, a course for authentic living, which will explore opening the doors to your divine potential. Available in most time zones across the world and starting March 27th, 2021. Please visit divinespiritualessence.com. To work with me as a physician, please visit drlaudi.com. Welcome to Science with Soul. Today, I'm honored to introduce Dr. Ham. Dr. Natalie Ham is a naturopathic medical doctor focusing on treating women's health issues with homeopathy. When she attended Arizona State University as a pre-med student, Something did not feel quite right with going down the path of traditional doctor. She then met a naturopathic doctor who explained how naturopathic medicine differed from traditional allopathic medicine. She wanted to know everything about it and was completely hooked. Healing people without drugs and surgery felt like it was some kind of a miracle and she wanted to know everything about it. Something felt very right with using this method of healing, and she now knew she needed to be a naturopathic doctor. After completing her undergraduate degree at ASU, she went on to study medicine at Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine and Health Sciences to obtain her medical degree. Around the same time as enrolling at SCNM, she saw a naturopathic doctor who healed her insomnia with homeopathy. She was so impressed as nothing seemed to help the way homeopathy did and decided she needed to focus on using homeopathy in her practice. Upon passing both sets of board exams, she was offered a residency position at SCNM. During this time, homeopathy was a specific focus in her practice, and she was fortunate to be trained by Dr. Stephen Messer, naturopathic doctor, who also became her mentor in addition to further training by Dr. Andre Saint's conferences in Montreal, Canada. Dr. Stephen Messer opened up a homeopathic residency after her traditional residency for an additional year of training with more focus in homeopathy. Dr. Ham was the first recipient of the homeopathic residency at SCNM, which still continues today. She currently operates Nourish Natural Medical Center in Tempe, Arizona, in partnership with a colleague. A warm welcome to you, Dr. Ham. I'm delighted to have you on the show today. Hi, thanks. It's good being here. I know you work a lot with homeopathy, and you have done this for many years, and um, I would consider you an expert in, in the field of homeopathy. So it's a real honor to have you on the show today. But a lot of people I've come across in my own practice are not familiar with homeopathy and what it can do for them. Right. So could you start by just explaining what, what is homeopathy? Yes, of course. Um, it's good to know these basics because a lot of people confuse homeopathy with just natural medicine. They think it's just 
the same thing um, or naturopathic medicine when you know naturopathic medicine is this umbrella for lots of different modalities homeopathy being one of them and so homeopathy is just one form of those natural of, of natural medicine that we use in order to help heal the body so basically homeopathy um, helps stimulate that natural ability to heal within the body what it actually is is highly diluted natural substances that we can get from either plants or animals or minerals. And we give them in either the form of small pellets or liquid and they dissolve in the mouth. Um, there are hundreds of different remedies that all come from these natural sources. Um, and each remedy can be used one at a time to help treat disease. So basically with homeopathy, how I, how I usually describe it is that your body has this innate ability to heal. So for example, you get a, a cut or a cold, and if you did nothing, almost always your body amounts this natural healing response, initiating this healing cascade and you heal. So homeopathic medicine works with these mechanisms to help the body return to this balanced state and help reset the uh, self-healing mechanisms so you can get to back to that, that vital state again. And how do you, um, how do you know what homeopathic remedy you need? That's a good question. Um, so you, like I said, there's hundreds of different remedies, um, maybe thousands. <laughs> and so most of the time for me personally, um, you, you either need to be trained in homeopathy or you need to see a, a well-trained homeopath to be able to figure out what homeopathic medicine that you need. So, um, what happens at the visits for me is because, you know, if I, somebody were to come to see me for um, anxiety, there's 450 remedies for anxiety. That <laughs> so I have to figure out how that is most individualized to that one person. And so um, little idiosyncrasies that, that come into play where, you know, someone's really anxious, sometimes they are restless and they pace across the floor. Sometimes they want to be alone. Sometimes they shiver with anxiety. Um, there's all sorts of different little individualizing um, uh, symptoms that come with somebody that comes in to be treated. And so what we have to do is find the most individualized remedy based on those symptoms. And so it narrows it down to an individualized remedy. And then we go ahead and um, give that particular remedy. Wow, so not exactly like regular traditional allopathic medicine. Um, because you're really figuring out what their symptoms are. Right, right. So when your body's out of balance, it's going to manifest this specific pattern of symptoms. And so by identifying um, those, those specific patterns that a good homeopathic doctor will be able to find that most specific remedy for that person to help correct that imbalance. So if I came to you and I said, oh, I get these headaches. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, you know, I'd, I'd take a Tylenol or ibuprofen or migraine medication, but it's not helping. What are the types of questions you would ask me about my headache? So I would ask you, um, first of all, I, you always try to get the person to tell them as much as you can without leading them, you know, you being a, <laughs> you know that. Um, <laughs> And so, um, you know, I'd ask them to tell me about the headaches and as much as they can at first. So, you know, some people are, um, can be suggestible, so you don't want to put things in their head. Um, so I would ask as much as you can, but the details that I would actually need are where, where exactly are the headaches? Do they radiate anywhere in the body? How severe are they? Um, what are some patterns to the headaches? Do you get them in the morning? Do you get them at night? Um, do you get them before eating or after eating? or anything that makes them better or worse. And this is where, as a homeopath, you have to kind of describe to the patient that not Tylenol or Advil, <laughs> or, <laughs> or herb or anything like that. what are some natural things, modalities that can make it better or worse? Like, do you tend to put pressure on your head? Do you need to like lay in a dark room? Do you want ice? Do you want heat? And all of these little things will help identify the, the most specific headache remedy for you. And does it matter where in the head it hurts at all or? It does. So for example, I woke up this morning with a little bit of a headache. And, <laughs> um, and so I, you know, my headache was on the left side and there's some headaches, headache remedies that are more specific to left-sided versus right-sided. Um, mine is 
better with pressure. I wanted cold, it hurt to move. And so I gave myself bryonia this morning to help alleviate that headache and feeling fine now. All right. Um, it's amazing how it's so specific to the different symptoms of the right. patient. Now, they um, can you buy homeopathic remedies in a store? Yes, absolutely. They're over the counter. Um, you can get them at Sprouts, Whole Foods, um, any kind of natural, um, local natural medical uh, medicine store. Um, there are also some combo remedies that you can get at more traditional pharmacies. So like you can get eye drops or ear drops or some like different combination remedies sometimes at um, just a regular pharmacy. Mm -hmm. And uh, are there different kinds of uh, doses for homeopathy or is it just one dose? Oh yeah, there's lots of different kinds of doses. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's very, there's, um, uh, there's lots of different kinds of doses. Um, most of the time over the counter, you can get lower, quote unquote, lower potencies, which, um, which are uh, more like 6X, 6C, um, 30C, um, and then they can go uh, up to 200. You just go, you can have higher and higher mm -hmm. potencies that usually you can get through your homeopathic doctor. So when you say there is higher and higher potencies, does that mean there is more and more of that substance in the homeo actually, in the pill. Yeah, <laughs> <It actually laughs> so homeopathic medicine is is made by um, uh, many 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 dilutions of of a crude substance. So what they do is take a crude substance of say um, coffee, and we can kind of talk about how that works in a, in a minute, um, and then dilute it down um, to multiple, many, many, many times over and over again until you get a very, very, very dilute natural substance. And in between those dilutions, they do something called a succussion, which is kind of like an agitation where they take the substance, succuss it, dilute it, succuss it, dilute it. And the more it's succussed and diluted down and down and down, it, that becomes quote unquote, a higher potency. Um, some people don't like that language. So sometimes they just say it's a different potency. Right. So succussing is kind of like shaking it up for people that are listening in other countries. Yeah. Shaking it, agitating it in a way where it's, you know, making the substance mm -hmm. the mass into the water and then diluting that and then continuing to agitate it and succuss it, shake it in that way and then diluting it again. Does anybody know how it works? Because it's so diluted, there is nothing left. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, that's it. That's a really good. That's a really good point. Um, so you know, they've done like things like gas chromatography on on homeopathic medicines, and I and where they can show that it's not the water anymore, but it's not the substance anymore either. You can kind of think of it as like the imprint of the substance in the water that gets kind of transferred each time. Um, so in terms of like how it really works, you would have to kind of go back to the history a little bit. Um, so homeopathy was developed hundreds of years ago by Samuel Hahnemann. Um, he was a, he was a doctor of the time where it was very, um, you know, they would, they would do bloodletting and put mercury in people's in order to be <laughs> very disillusioned with this. And in order to make a living as a doctor, he decided to just interpret medical textbooks. And by doing so, he found these very specific um, substances that caused certain symptoms or diseases in a healthy person could also treat those symptoms in a sick person. So this is called the law of similars or like cures like. So going back to the coffee analogy, when if you're um, how homeopathy treats um, insomnia would be if you if like okay so let's go back to if a like traditionally you had insomnia you went to a traditional route went to an allopathic doctor they would give you something that would bring on artificial sleep a hypnotic something that um, calmed you down but you know there are side effects to that it doesn't really treat the insomnia for good you take it away it comes back um, with homeopathy you would give a, a dilute an extremely diluted dose of a substance within that within large doses would cause sleeplessness like coffee in a healthy mm -hmm. person. And that actually helps stimulate the body to heal the insomnia by getting that very, very tiny dose of something that causes it in a very large dose. It's really fascinating, isn't it? How it works. Because <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds crazy. I've given uh, the coffee, coffee uh, to many right. patients and there's 
they were looking at me like I'm crazy. Wait, it says coffee on it. And I said, no, it's like, it's very, very small. And I, I tell them, I swear by it. It works. I took it through med school. Yeah. It's amazing. You wake, if I woke up, I took uh, coffee, the little homeopathic remedy, and I'd go right back to sleep. It was amazing. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So is homeopathy regulated by the FDA? Yes. Yes. So um, the homeopathic pharmacopoeia, so homeopathy is... Um, because the substances, this is a, a question that kind of goes back to like the full, the full safety of it, because homeopathic medicines in their crude dose are, can be considered like toxic or uh, dangerous substances that you would never give to somebody in large doses, such as like arsenicum is arsenic. You wouldn't give somebody arsenic. <laughs> right. The dilution, they don't have any of that, those dangerous substances of the arsenic left. Like I said, it's not the arsenic anymore. It's not the water anymore. It's the homeopathic version of arsenicum. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, it is regulated by the FDA and it's um, run through homeopathic farm, the homeopathic pharmacopoeia of the United States. And um, I know you talked a little bit about how it started. I've heard stories that the double blind studies actually were started by the homeopaths. Do you know oh, anything about that? I don't. I don't know that. That's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's fascinating that the homeopaths were actually the ones that came up with double blind studies. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Get a lot of flack for saying that they don't have <laughs> placebo studies, but they do. They actually do. But it's yeah. hard to do um, with homeopathy because you can't give everybody the same thing because it's so individualized. Mm -hmm. So when people go into the store and they say, okay, I'm going to try this homeopathic remedy, they're at Sprouts or Whole Foods, and they look at the little guide that is above these little tubes that look, the little blue tubes, as I call them, they look like a chapstick sort of, the, the, that the little pellets come in, and they pick a remedy and then they say, oh, it didn't work. Right. So why is that, why is it that it wouldn't work for them? So they didn't pick the right one. And it's because it's such a crude, it's such a, a very crude um, way of putting it up. It's like, here is one of the thousands. 400, <laughs> 450. Yeah, so say they got the right yeah. sulfur. Sulfur, right. Is like if I'm looking at um, how to, like the symptoms that it can treat, there's an entire small book on all the symptoms that sulfur can treat, but they boil it down to eczema. And so... And then when I'm looking, you know, if somebody has eczema, sulfur might be the remedy, but it might not. So it's kind of like a shot in the dark um, of like, <laughs> this may or may not help. Now with very sensitive people, if they got a low dose or they got a, something with a combination re remedy of a bunch of different remedies in there, um, they, they could get like uh, uh, the lower, the lower the dose, the like less accurate you need to be with your prescription. So if you got like a very lower dose, like a um, a 6C or something like that, you could have a little bit of a modifying effect and it could help. But, you know, if somebody goes in and says, oh, it's for this, oh, it didn't work. That's not really giving um, homeopathy a fair chance because homeopathy does work, but you have to have the right remedy to make it work. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's very, it's like you're fine tuning it to fit that person's exact symptoms. Right. I mean, for example, yeah. my homeopathic intake is an, an hour, an hour and a half to find that remedy that specifically is geared towards that one person, I couldn't boil it down to one word <laughs> for them to yeah, I, <laughs> try this one remedy. No, I, I definitely doesn't work, but some people can be lucky and it's, you know, it can be worth a, a shot uh, right. trying something they find at Whole Foods first. If they're lucky, um, they got the right remedy. And if that didn't work, uh, please don't give up, go find somebody like Dr. Ham that can help you. Yes, uh, and, and really fine tune and find the remedy that's going to work for you. Right. But that being said, very simplistic um, diseases, such as a bruise, it, it's much easier to find a homeopathic remedy. If you have like a very, like Arnica almost always works for bruises. <laughs> right. One symptom bruises don't really vary much by the way that they look or the way that they're, they feel or anything like that. So if you had ve something very simplistic like that, um, you could you could use arnica easily for a bruise. However, if you have something really complicated, um, like Crohn's disease or something, you're not going to go and find the right remedy by going to Whole Foods and just picking one. Yeah. So what? So you mentioned Crohn's disease. What kind of diseases can you treat with homeopathy? What do you see in your practice? Um, homeopathy can be can be used to treat almost anything. So you can use homeopathy to treat 
chronic diseases or acute diseases. So chronic diseases like of the mind, anxiety, depression, physical diseases, any kind of pain, fatigue. Um, I personally treat a lot of women's health, um, but homeopathy can also be used to treat colds, flus, bladder infections, sinus infections, viral infections. It can be used to pretty much treat anything. So you can go acute or chronic. Mm -hmm. So um, you treat a lot of women's health issues. Can you give an example of the type of things that you see in your clinic that you treat? Yeah, yeah. I, I treat pretty much anything that has to do with the menstrual cycle. <laughs> um, <laughs> having, having any problems with it, having like, you know, PCOS, um, you know, before the menstrual cycle, PMS, heavy, painful, irregular cycles, um, endometriosis. Um, ending of cycles, um, like menopause. Um, I also treat a lot of um, infertility, um, recurrent loss. And then, you know, when that, and then also anything that comes along with pregnancy. So the morning sickness, pain, fatigue, mood issues, postpartum, and anything that like goes hand in hand with all of those things. Like there's, if somebody comes in for painful cycles, there's often something else going on, like headaches or fatigue or, um, depression or something too. So it all gets mixed in. And so we find one remedy that tries to treat everything. It doesn't always work out that way. Some people have to, you know, have different remedies for different things, but that's what we try for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fascinating uh, how many things you can actually treat with homeopathy there. It's uh, really uh, amazing when you think about how people kind of always feel that they have to get a pharmaceutical drug to treat it. When in fact, um, you might actually be able to treat the condition at the root cause with homeopathy. Correct, correct, yep, root cause. <laughs> yeah, can you, um, can you treat children with homeopathy? Yes, um, yes, you can treat children with homeopathy. It's very safe um, using those really dilute uh, doses. We, we are able to find the most specific thing by using the, the like I said, the most dilute, is, the most dilute um, part of the, the remedy. So they're very safe. Um, and we can treat children, we can treat newborn babies, we can treat pregnant women with homeopathy. It's amazing. So you can even treat like a very young infant. Uh huh. Yeah. And how do you do that? Do you give them pellets or drops? Or how does that work? I've heard some people doing pellets, because there's apparently some sort of rooting thing that but most people, most people get a little nervous about that. So <laughs> Yeah, I always just, you can put it in, um, dilute it in a little bit of water and then just like um, with a little, um, like a little syringe or something or mm -hmm. a, a tincture dropper, just drop it into their mouth. I've had women um, dilute it with breast milk as well because um, that's what they wanted to do. But yeah, you can dilute it and put it in their mouth. It's, it works just fine. Yeah, what kind of things do you see in, in infants that you treat with homeopathy? I personally don't treat children, um, but um, my colleague does. And just anything from ear infections to um, any behavioral disorders, really a lot. So um, any chronic, like, you know, chronic ear infections, chronic nasal issues, um, sinusitis for kids um, or, or, you know, ADD um, or any other kind of behavioral issues, bedwetting. Oh, it's, yeah, it's amazing how, um, how effective that can be. Does homeopathy cause any kind of side effects for people or is it safe? It's very, very safe. So it doesn't cause side effects. So um, it, it's kind of, it's important to, to kind of, people will say the word side effect, but it's not what home, if homeopathy produces a secondary effect, it's not <laughs> what it is. So because they're so diluted, um, we, there's no side effects. So the original crude substances would be, have those like toxic doses and side effects, but not the homeopathically made. Um, so whenever somebody's about to come in and um, I know that they're a big researcher, I always, like if I'm giving them something like arsenicum or nexavamica, where they're gonna look it up and say, oh my gosh, Dr. Ham gave me this toxic thing. <laughs> always say, don't worry, homeopathic preparation, it's different than the crude dose. So it's very different. Um, so the homeopathically made um, substances are not going to be, um, they're not going to have any side effects. They do have what's called aggravations or um, therapeutic aggravations. Because homeopathy is holistic in nature, once you start giving a homeopathic remedy, it, it like almost tries to reset the whole system. And so if there's like dormant inflammation or something that was suppressed by something in the past, such as like 
you had eczema as a kid and you just had a bunch of steroids put on it and it you know just came in it never really got rid of it but it just the inflammation kind of went dormant and went inward and then maybe created other things such as asthma down the road once you start homeopathic remedies if i gave you something for the asthma potentially that eczema could come back and so that's not necessarily a side effect it's your body kind of kind of going backwards and flushing out the the thing that caused it in the first place. And so I often have to, you know, always go over this with patients that some of these things might happen. Always contact me. Do not go back to using <laughs> back in the same position that we're, that we're in right now. And a lot of times it can kind of come out. It's, it doesn't happen very often, but it happens with some patients, especially if there's that history of suppression and it comes out, comes to the surface and usually just goes away. Sometimes we have to stop what we're doing and treat that homeopathically and then move forward. Um, so those things can happen. And then sometimes people, that's more of a return of bold symptoms. Um, a therapeutic aggravation would be somebody is, um, they feel a little bit worse before they get better. And so it's kind of like the remedy starts reacting with them and like their symptoms just get turned up a little bit on the volume. And that usually happens for 24 to 48 hours um, with the sensitive patients. Um, it could happen longer. So I often tell them to call if that happens, but you know, it only happens from maybe 10% of the population. It's not everybody. Most of the time people don't get any of that and they just feel better. Mm -hmm. Can you treat um, diseases like MS with homeopathy? Yes. Yeah, you can. Actually, um, Dr. Messer, my mentor, um, I, I haven't tre I treated it through him, not directly myself, but he had quite a few patients with MS and he would always say that it responded well to homeopathy. Yes, it's amazing. Because uh, yeah. yeah, I had to come up with something that, <laughs> that uh -huh. is really uh, something that people don't think that would work with homeopathy. And because those, you know, tends to be very specific drugs and uh, immune suppressants and things like that. But even with conditions like that, homeopathy can help, which is amazing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In my residency, um, there were, there was a couple of patients that I witnessed and um, really just getting them on the right remedy turned their symptoms around where, where at the very least we could get good quality of life and symptom management. You know, it, every disease is going to be different. Some diseases, if somebody comes to see me and they are, um, you know, having painful cycles and um, things like that, my goal is to get them to the point where that doesn't happen anymore. The cycles are better. Um, they don't need me. They don't need the remedies. They're, they're fixed. Now, there are other types of diseases, like parts of like, you know, MS, there's the progressive and there's the relapsing remitting. And so something that's progressive, our goal is to be, you know, to slow down the progress and give them a better quality of life. Sometimes when there's new onset MS, um, you can get a, um, um, an alleviation of symptoms as well as you can look on the MRI and see improvement in the MRI as well. And so, you know, it, it just depends on, on how much kind of destruction actually happened to the nervous system before homeopathic medicine started. Yeah, it's just fa fascinating that it could help treat something like MS. Right. Um, sometimes um, I hear from people that they tried homeopathy at some point and it made them feel bad. And they said, I don't want to do homeopathy. It makes me feel bad. What advice do you have um, to people that sort of feel like they had a bad experience with that because they were most likely just experiencing that aggravation. Right. So what advice do you have to people that feel that it didn't work for them or it makes them feel worse? Yeah, my advice would be um, that, they, that they probably took too much of it and too fast. And if they did it on their own, um, they would need probably, if, if, they, if that happened to them, they probably would need a homeopathic doctor because um, you know, I have patients that I can give high doses to daily or multiple times a day, doesn't phase them in terms of any like aggravations. And then I have patients that I dilute it in water and give them like one drop every <laughs> couple of days to every couple of weeks. Right. Any more than that. <laughs> and so yes. 
somebody that is is well versed in understanding sensitive patients. Um, it, and it often means for that person, if they said it made me made them feel bad, it probably is going to be a really effective form of therapy mm -hmm. for them. That probably could get them totally better. Um, because they're so sensitive to it, but they just need much, much lower doses and um, l like not, not repeated doses, just, you know, single doses as needed or maybe even diluted down. Yeah. Good advice. I I've seen that myself. It's um, like some, like you say, some people can tolerate a high dose and it's 10 drops three times a day. And then somebody else one drop and it just yeah. <laughs> puts them over the edge. So it's very, very individualized. So for people that have tried it, either you didn't have the right remedy and you need to go find a good homeopath like Dr. Ham, and that can uh, spend over an hour with you and just ask you homeopathic questions to tailor that remedy specifically to you. So people that are listening, um, how can they work with you? How do they find you? Um, well, you can go to um, our website. It's nourishnaturalmedicine.com. Um, that has the phone number um, on there. Uh, they can call the office there and we give out a free 15 minute consult for anybody who's interested if they're you know, not sure if it's right for them or just wants to, you know, for us sometimes to see if it's a good fit. Um, and so you can call and make an appointment and make sure, yeah, there's, there's a few nourishes out there. So this one is nourishnaturalmedicine.com. Um, look for the purple flower. Uh, we're on Instagram and uh, Facebook as well. Great. And uh, the link will be in the podcast notes. So you should be able to just click on the link and go straight to that website. So it's been an honor to have you on the show today, Dr. Ham, and sharing all your knowledge about homeopathy with the listeners. Thank you so much. It was so good to be here. Thank you so much for coming on. All right. Bye. I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of Dr. Lottie Science with Soul. Make sure you are subscribed so you will be notified of new episodes as they become available. To learn more about me or to work with me spiritually for ancestral healing, medical intuitive, evidential psychic medium, or to take my eight week long course, Soul's Journey Heart's Way, a course for authentic living, which will explore opening the doors to your divine potential, available in most time zones across the world and starting March 27, 2021. Please visit divinespiritualessence.com. To work with me as a physician, please visit drlaudi.com. My book, Med School After Menopause, The Journey of My Soul, an inspirational story about transformation, healing, and spirituality, is available online at Amazon as well as other online platforms worldwide. <music>